This is an Xbox One. These are a bunch of PC parts that I'm going to try and put into the Xbox One. Let's see how this goes, shall we? Guy attempts to put PC parts into an Xbox. All right, so before we get into the build of this Xbox PC, I wanted to give a little bit of a background as we watch me reenact taking this Xbox One apart. So I bought this Xbox in 2014, 10 years ago, when the year that it came out. I can't believe it's been 10 years. I was always a console gamer. Yes, before I got into PC gaming, of course, uh, Xbox was my go to. I was upgrading from my Xbox 360 to the Xbox One and and Madden was my game at the time. Didn't really need anything else but a console, you know, an Xbox. Fast forward in life, I got married, I had kids, and I didn't play as much. And I left my Xbox sitting underneath a mini split heater. Uh, didn't touch it for a while. There was a game sitting on top of the fan. I think the heater melted the case into the fan and it didn't work anymore. Let's just say that. Uh, I tried to turn it on, didn't even boot up at all. Brought it to a place to see if they could fix it. They gave it right back to me and said, nope, it's a motherboard issue. We don't deal with that. I said, okay, great, thanks a lot. So I tried to replace the motherboard, too expensive. I tried to fix the motherboard myself over my head, too complicated for me to figure out. So it's just been sitting around for a while. Until now, I'm trying to come up with the ideas to what I can do with this, I said, why don't I try to turn this into a PC Xbox? So that's what we're doing here in this video. Enough story time. Let's get into the actual build now, shall we? So let's talk about this build a little bit, starting with the CPU, which is actually an APU. It's the Ryzen 5 5600G. I decided to go with an APU because I didn't really want to mess with a dedicated GPU in such a tiny little space. I probably could have and made it work, but I kind of wanted something a little bit simpler and easier to work with. So I went with the APU and the 5600G was actually a good deal. I got it for about $125 on Newegg and it came with free RAM. It came with this OWL memory series, 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM. So it seemed like a great deal. So that's what I went with for my CPU and GPU in a sense. Now for the cooler, I just went with the stock cooler, the AMD Wraith Stealth cooler that it comes with. It comes with thermal paste applied, so I didn't even have to apply thermal paste. I just, you know, unscrewed some things and screwed the cooler in. It was the right height for the Xbox, which was perfect. I measured it and everything. So it worked out great. Now, of course, let's talk about the motherboard a little bit here. I wound up going with the MSI B450M A Pro Max 2, mainly because of cost. I just wanted to keep things on a budget here. I needed a micro ATX board, which is exactly what this was, just so it could fit in the Xbox based on the measurements I took. And I got this for $70 on Newegg, which wasn't bad. I probably could have done a little better in terms of value with the motherboard. I probably could have gone used or looked elsewhere, but I was doing everything on Newegg, so I just wound up getting this from there. Now for the storage, I went with this King Spec M.2 MVME, 256 gigs. Again, trying to keep this kind of on a budget. I got this for 23 bucks on Newegg. I just needed enough storage to download a couple games and test this thing out. Obviously, I could have gotten a bigger drive. I could have gone... 512, I could have gotten one terabyte, but 256 gigs was all I needed for this project. All right, let's talk about the power supply. So I cheated a little bit here. I went with a Thermaltake Smart Series 500 watt standard ATX power supply. A, because it was cheaper, and B, I was gonna reuse all these parts for another build anyway, and I just wanted to see if this thing could work. I didn't get a power supply that could fit into the Xbox. There's definitely parts you can get. I could have gone with a Pico ATX adapter, which would then allow me to plug in an external 240 watt power supply. I'll leave links in the description below, but I went with this instead. Next, I need to figure out how I was gonna turn this thing on. I wanted to ideally use the main Xbox power button, but to do that, I was gonna need to figure out how to solder and all that stuff. I didn't really wanna deal with it. So I got this handy dandy power button from Amazon for seven bucks. Looks pretty cool, easy to just plug in and use. So that's what I went with for the power button. So I mentioned a melted Xbox game case earlier. I think that's what got all over the inside of this thing here. So just wanted to clean it up a little bit and wipe some of this stuff off before putting my brand new motherboard in. So I somehow forgot to capture footage of me actually putting the motherboard inside of the Xbox Xbox case, but here's the final product. It actually turned out pretty well. Couple things, I can only get one screw into one of the risers that came with the Xbox case. So if I were to do this again, I would probably either find a way to get some custom risers in there or something just to make the motherboard a little more secure in there. Cable management, obviously not the best. I could have made the cable management look a little bit better, but again, this was kind of a temporary project. So I just kind of stuffed it all in there. But you can see there is plenty of room in this Xbox. If I was really more creative, I probably could have gotten a GPU in there and maybe even a you know one of those smaller power supplies like I was talking about earlier but with this being an external power supply there's a ton of room in here to put in some more components if I ever wanted to another caveat to this whole thing the back IO shield area I initially had the IO shield on there and it kind of fit but as you can kind of see here the 
top peripherals. I was unable to get to those when they were flush up against the edge of the case, the ethernet cord mainly, which I needed to use. So I had to take the IO shield off and kind of push the motherboard back just a little bit so I could connect all the cords that I needed to. If I were to, you know, do this more permanently, I'd probably have to cut off some of the plastic on the back part of this case here in order to get the IO shield in there and fitting and all that. Kind of a minor thing, you know, I was able to get it to work without it, but if I were to do this long term, I would need to do a little customization there. All right, now it's time for the big reveal. Will this thing turn on when I push the button? Yeah. And hey, look at that. We boot to BIOS. Nice. So after setting up Windows 11 and getting some games downloaded, um, I wanted the Xbox to boot into Steam big picture mode. So it kind of felt like, you know, you were booting up an Xbox for the first time. So that's what I did. And, um, you know, it worked out pretty great. So now that we're all set up and ready to go, let's play some games. So I wanted to play some games that brought me back to my Xbox One days, uh, starting off with The Witcher 3, kind of an Xbox One staple of that era. Now this is The Witcher 3 next gen update, so obviously the graphics have been enhanced and all that, which probably is going to hurt our FPS a little bit here, but I'm getting about what I would expect, you know, near 30 FPS, just under, you know, 25, 27. We're on 1080p low, we've got FSR on, quality mode, and it's really not bad. I mean, this is kind of what you would expect. This is about what you would get if you were playing an Xbox One. I think the Xbox One capped its games at 30 frames per second. So we're really getting that Xbox One experience here, which is really what I was going for with this build, kind of recreating that Xbox One experience. So we're going to try out 720p low with FSR quality, and you can see that does give us a little FPS boost. Now we're in the mid-30s, low 40s. So obviously, if you want a little bit more performance out of this, you can bump down the uh, resolution, and that's definitely going to help. Then if we bump some settings down even more and we go FSR Ultra Performance, now we're in the high 30s. Not a ton more performance, but obviously just tweaking those settings as much as we can to get as much out of it. So, you know, about what I expected. Pretty fun to play The Witcher 3 uh, the way it was in the Xbox One days. All right, moving on to Dark Souls 3, another staple of the Xbox One era. Again, we're trying to just mimic what we can do with how the Xbox One was. 30 frames per second was kind of the standard with that console. And that's exactly what we're getting here. We're on 1080p low. We move inside, we gain a little FPS, less to render in there, I guess. You're getting mid to high 30s, low 40s. So pretty decent experience. You get outside, it drops down a little bit. And uh, yeah, I was able to take on this knight. And uh, let's see if I can kill him here. Yeah, we got him. We got him with... Less than 30 frames per second, not bad, right? Same as The Witcher 3, we can bump those settings down to 720 low, and look at that, now we're hitting 60. Much smoother, obviously you gotta give up some of that quality to get some of that performance, but this game does cap at 60, and you can see that we're not getting it above 60 at all. But that's okay, I mean, to play a game like this at 60 frames per second on a build like this, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. And you can see that I died there, uh, that kinda sucked, but... You know, that's what happens in, in Souls games, man. You die a lot. So yeah, 720 low, 50, 60 frames per second. Really not a bad experience. All right, next up is Fortnite and LEGO Fortnite, to be exact. Uh, my first time playing this mode, I had to start in LEGO Fortnite because uh, regular Battle Royale Fortnite wasn't loading for me, something with the drivers that I fixed later on. But anyway, we started with LEGO Fortnite 1080p high, right around that 25, 30 frames per second, you know, similar to what we were seeing with Dark Souls and Witcher. And then we move on to performance mode where, wow, that's where you get the gain in FPS here. You can see we're getting 120, no problem. This is the way you gotta play LEGO Fortnite. That's for sure. I wound up building a fire, you know, I was starting to figure out what to do. Seems like it could be fun. I've just never played it before, uh, but the performance turned out to be good in performance mode, that's for sure. All right, so once I got Battle Royale working, I loaded into a game, kept it on performance mode in 1080p, and yeah, the performance is, is just great. We're getting 115, 120 frames per second, no problem at all. Pretty awesome to get this kind of performance out of an APU. Um, obviously, if I was on the DirectX 12 or DirectX 11 versions, I'd be getting a little bit less, or if I was in higher settings, but Pretty awesome to see this performance out of this APU on Fortnite. And last but not least, we have Madden, my personal staple of the Xbox One era. I tried to go as far back as I could on the Maddens, but I couldn't find many versions prior to Madden 21, so that's why I'm playing Madden 21 here for the PC. But if I wanted to get back into Madden, I certainly could, because this looks very playable, and I had a good time jumping back into it.
All right, and there you have it, folks. A Xbox One that has been turned into a gaming PC. I have to say this project turned out to be a success. A couple things I could have done a little bit better. First off, securing the motherboard with custom risers just to get it in there a little more firmly. Cutting out the plastic backplate so that the IO shield could fit and I could get all my cables in and out, plug those in the right way. The power supply was the big one. Obviously getting a smaller power supply, either that could fit in that case or going the adapter route and getting a smaller external power supply to plug in there. And if I wanted to, I probably could have gotten a dedicated GPU in there. I just didn't want the hassle. Um, I went, that's why I went the APU route, which really, you know, the performance wasn't bad. We definitely met what the Xbox one could do. So I'd say successful mission. And if you like this video, please like and comment down below. Subscribe if you liked it too. Consider becoming a channel member. There's all sorts of perks. I'm going to be putting out a lot more videos, some live streams, things like that, potentially giveaways. So make sure you become a member of the channel and I will make sure that you get some of those perks coming your way. Thank you all and have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.